Elastic Search is a distributed open source search and analytics engine for all types of data including textual, numerical, geospatial, structured and unstructured data. Elastic Search is built on Apache Lucene and was first released in 2010. Elastic Search is the central component of the Elastic Stack, a set of open source tools for data ingestion, enrichment, storage, analysis and visualization. It is known for its simple REST APIs, distributed nature, speed, and scalability. It is commonly referred to as the ELK stack, which includes Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. We'll talk about Logstash and Kibana later. Let's actually see what Elasticsearch means in its very simple terms. So, Elasticsearch is a database that stores, retrieves, and manages document-oriented and semi-structured data. When you use Elasticsearch, you store data in JSON document form, then you query them for retrieval. So basically Elasticsearch is just a database. So let's see why we need to use Elasticsearch. Products that involve e-commerce and search engines with huge databases are facing issues, including product information retrieval taking too long. This leads to poor user experience and in turn turns off potential customers. There is also a lag in search is attributed to the relational database used for the product design where the data is scattered among multiple tables and a successful retrieval of meaningful user information requires fetching the data from these tables. Now, the relational database works comparatively slowly when it comes to use data and fetching search results through database queries. Understandably, businesses nowadays are looking for data storage alternatives in the hope of promoting quick retrieval. This can be achieved by adopting NoSQL rather than RDBMS or Relative Database Management System, sorry, Relational Database Management System for storing data. Elasticsearch is one such NoSQL distributed database. The speed and scalability of Elasticsearch and its ability to index many types of content mean that it can be used for many cases. Some of them are application search, website search, enterprise search, logging and data analytics, business analytics, and much more. So how does Elasticsearch work? So raw data flows into Elasticsearch from a variety of resources, including logs, systems, metrics, and web applications. Data ingestion is the process by which this raw data is parsed, normalized, and enriched before it is indexed in Elasticsearch. Once indexed in Elasticsearch, users can run complex queries against their data and use aggregations to retrieve complex summaries of their data. From Kibana, users can create powerful visualizations for their data, share dashboards, and manage the Elastic Stack. So Kibana is used for data visualization, and it also provides a very handy search bar which can be used to search your database in Elasticsearch. Now, this diagram shows how a query is executed for retrieval of information behind the scenes in Elasticsearch. After in indexing the data into Elasticsearch, the user writes a query to fetch some data. In the diagram, the user wants to, cho to check if there is anything in the data that is indexed which matches the person attributed to Jack. After this, the search API is used to understand the query and the search and search for the information in the index and through the same API, the result is returned back to the user in JSON format. So, the query goes to the API and then that API looks for the uh, query or looks for the match of the person Jack in the index which contains some shards and shards we'll talk about in upcoming slides and then the result is sent back from the same node to a response which is also in JSON format. Now let's look at some basic concepts of Elasticsearch. First is cluster. A cluster is a collection of one or more servers that together hold entire data and give federated in indexing and search capabilities across all servers. For relational databases, the node is DB intense, they can be n nodes with the same cluster name. Next is near real time. This is one of the popular features of Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is a near real time search platform and there is a slide from the time you index a document until it actually becomes searchable. 
Next is the index. The index is a collection of documents that have similar characteristics. Next comes node. A node is a single server that holds some data and participates on the cluster indexing and querying. A node can be configured to join a specific cluster by the, by the particular cluster name. A single cluster can have as many nodes as we want. A node is simply one Elasticsearch instance. Next concept is shards. A shard is a subset of documents of an index. So an index can be divided into many shards and this we had seen in the previous slide about the diagram where an index is divided into shard 1 to shard n. Now in this video we will actually set up Elasticsearch and Kibana on a MacBook Air laptop. Now the process might be different uh, just a little bit different for Windows and Mac but after one point the process is the same for both. So let's start. Now the best way to learn about Elasticsearch or to set up Elasticsearch is to go through the Elasticsearch documentation. You can also learn about it through documentation as well and you don't need to go through some external tutorials for this. So uh, even in this video we'll actually go through the documentation and learn from it and actually set it up from scratch. So first let's download Elasticsearch and for that I'll put the link to this uh, website in the description and what we need to do is we need to run Elasticsearch locally on either Linux, Mac OS or Windows. So I'm currently using a MacBook Air. So I'll download the MacBook Air uh, zip file. And once this is downloaded, you have to extract it. So you don't have to use uh, these uh, commands, but you can directly just double click on it and then extract the folder. And now let's go and check the folder in a downloads directory. So here we have Elasticsearch after extracting it, Elasticsearch 7.5.1, the newest version. And after this, we need to download something called as Kibana. So Kibana is a data visualization tool, which you can use to visualize the data which you have in Elasticsearch. So once we set up Elasticsearch, we only need that to actually put in the data. But if we have Kibana, it will be easy to visualize the kind of data which we are putting into Elasticsearch and also to visualize the data properly. So let's download Kibana now. Again, to download Kibana, I'll put the link uh, in the description so that you can check it out for yourself. And I'll be downloading the Mac version. This is also a zip file which you extract to a folder and then you can run Kibana through a folder. So I'll not show the downloading process here, but you can uh, do that for yourself. So again, we go through downloads to find Kibana and we have it here with the folder. Now, one thing before we jump on to actually setting up Elasticsearch, to have Elasticsearch and Kibana running on your desktop, you need to have the most updated Java JDK version in your laptop or your PC. So make sure that if you do not have Java JDK in your computer, uh, please install that first. Uh, I will not be showing that process here. So make sure that you install Java JDK first, uh, the newest version or update your Java JDK so that you can actually run Elasticsearch and Kibana on your computer. Because if you don't have the updated version or uh, the JDK, then you will bump it, you will come up with some errors in future, which you will not be able to actually debug because uh, it will be really hidden that the JDK is not required. And I had gone through this problem when I was actually setting up Elasticsearch for my own laptop and I had to update my JDK. So just make sure that your Java JDK has been updated or installed to the newest version. Okay, now let's go and start setting up Elasticsearch. So now uh, we need to actually open up terminal. Uh, we can just open up terminal from here. I use a different terminal app called as item for Mac. So you can do that. If you are on Windows, you can open command prompt. And what you need to do first is go to the place where you have uh, the Elasticsearch and Kibana folders ready. So as you can see, I had it in downloads here. So I'm, I'll be going through my downloads folder and let's go into Elasticsearch first. And now we need to go inside bin. So you can see bin here, the binary folder. We need to go inside bin and then we need to run Elasticsearch. 
So here, as you can see, you see a lot of Elasticsearch modules, but we need to only run the one which only says Elasticsearch. So to run it, what you can do is just type dot slash Elasticsearch, and that is enough to actually run Elasticsearch on your laptop. Now, this might take some time, uh, depending upon the RAM you have in your laptop, it might change, but should be done. It should not take more than a minute or more than two minutes. Let's see how much time it takes for me. So first, it do you see a lot of things here? So just ignore them for now, unless you run into some error and this process actually closes. So it's currently loading some plugins, but there were no plugins found. And then it was trying to actually set up a local server. So you will see where we can actually see our Elasticsearch server running. And then you have the cluster. So we talked about cluster in the previous video. Uh, the link is in the description. And the sh health is now from red to yellow and it does not show yellow to green so we'll see that now now to actually see that you have your server running of Elasticsearch go to the local host 9200 port so 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 so on your local host the 9200 port is for Elasticsearch and let's click enter as you can see uh, we get some uh, JSON data here. Uh, you can see the raw data, uh, raw JSON data here. But since I'm using Firefox, you get a pretty version of it. And the tagline is, you know, for search. But this is not enough actually to see if your Elasticsearch is running properly or not, or if the health is actually green or not. So we'll actually see a different way of doing this. But uh, let's just say that if this is running properly for now. Let's actually set up Kibana. So uh, open up a new terminal or uh, just open up a new tab in your terminal and let's go to downloads again where we have kibana in, uh, installed the folder uh, let us just, let just find it yes we have it here and let's go into the kibana folder and again the same process for kibana as it's, it's as it was for elasticsearch go inside the binary folder bin and again dot slash just type kibana and that should be more than enough now I think Kibana takes up more time to run than Elasticsearch, at least on my computer. So let's wait for it. I don't want to pause and then, <coughs> sorry, play the video again because I want to see if some errors come up or not. Until then we can just check if Elasticsearch is running properly or not. So 9200, port is fine, it's still running. It has the tagline, it has all the builds, uh, the name of my computer, cluster name, cluster ID and let's see okay so there were no errors uh, there's a lot of uh, information here don't worry about that just make sure that the status for Kibana changes from yellow to green because Kibana has to be green when it runs only then it will be running properly if the status is only yellow then you might come up with some errors and the server here is running at localhost port 5601 so Elasticsearch was running on 9200 and Kibana is on 5601. Let's go and actually run it and see what we get. So Kibana already gives you a lot of uh, a proper website, a proper a portal where you can actually do a lot of stuff with your data. You can add sample data, update data, use Elasticsearch data. So when you uh, simultaneously run the Elasticsearch server and the Kibana server, the Kibana server automatically tracks the data which you upload or manipulate on Elasticsearch. So you don't have to have a way to connect your uh, Elasticsearch server with Kibana. Uh, it automatically takes care of that. Now, let's see what we have to do next on the Elasticsearch uh, documentation. So we have downloaded it. We have extracted the folders. We have also started Elasticsearch from bin. So the same uh, thing which I did. In documentation and it's the same in Windows as well so the process is same from now on now we don't have to start two more instances because it's just a video to show how to set up Elasticsearch so we will not be uh, starting two more instances or two more uh, servers and what we need to do is we need to uh, do this step to verify that the clusters is running so for that we need to uh, copy this curl command so uh, it's a get uh, API of Elasticsearch where you can get some information from the Elasticsearch server. So 
now uh, a very tiresome or cumbersome way to do this is to actually copy this as curl and then run it on your terminal but there is a better way of actually running these commands because you will be doing this all the time with Elasticsearch you will be actually uh, using a lot of APIs to upload your data or to remove it, delete it, change it so there is a better way of actually uh, using these commands not on the terminal but on Kibana so uh, copy this as curl go to your Kibana server and click on this tool or developer tools and you get a very nice console here which will act as your terminal here and you can just paste the curl command and then click this and as you can see here you get the, all the information here so my status is yellow uh, I think that's because I have some uh, minor problems in my server but this should be green for you if you are follow all the steps for now I think I had made some changes to my server that is why it's yellow but it should be green for you if it's not then you have to actually make sure that it is green and I'll do that later so this shows if your health of your Elasticsearch server is good or not and this has to be green make sure that it's green it's yellow for me but for you it has to be green and that is how you check whether your Elasticsearch server is running or not and let's see what's next so now we have actually finished this page of documentation and let's actually move on to ind indexing some documents or adding some data to our Elasticsearch server. So since it's a new no SQL database, Elasticsearch is a new SQL database, let's actually put up some JSON documents inside the index and see how it actually shows. So again, uh, we have to use the put API uh, to actually put some data in into the Elasticsearch server. So here we will use the same examples as in the documentation and see how this works. So again, uh, we copy this as curl because that's the easier way of doing it. Go to the console and paste it and then click enter. And as you can see, we get this JSON which, is, which has some met metadata about the uh, function or the command we just had run. So here uh, we, have an in we have made an index customer as you can see here. And inside that, we put a document of ID one. So we gave it, a, gave it an ID of our own if not Elasticsearch will all give it an ID by itself and it has to be pretty print, pretty printed so that you know you can see it properly and as you can see the result is created and you have two shards uh, one successful nothing failed and now let's actually get this back from the server so now that we have put something here let's just see if we can uh, extract it back from the server or not and for that we have the get API so the put API is used to actually put some data into Elasticsearch and get is to get some data back. So the process is the same again. We copy it as curl, go to Kibana, paste it. And as you can see, uh, the APIs are, pre are pretty common, uh, pretty similar. We just put, we just change put to get and we get customer and the doc one. So it's pretty intuitive as well. And we just make sure that it's pretty printed so that it's easy to read. And let's click this. And yeah, as you can see, we get the metadata first and then the source. So the metadata is that the index is customer, the type is a document and the ID is one. And then we found uh, the document, which is one, so found is true. And the source is that the name is John Doe. So this is how you actually put some data into Elasticsearch and visualize that or see that using Kibana. And after that, what you need to do is create an index pattern. So we will see this and how to actually upload bulk data in the next video because I think this is enough for one video I don't want to extend it to a very long video so this was a very simple introduction about how to actually install Elasticsearch in Kibana on your desktop and make sure that you uh, comment down all the errors which you get and I'll try to solve all those errors in the comment section as well so before you uh, actually comment make sure that you have the most updated version of Java JDK java development kit and after that use these websites which are in the description the links in the description to install elasticsearch and kibana and then follow the process which i just did and you'll be able to see it perfectly in the next video we'll actually uh, upload bulk data so uh, in real life situations we don't actually uh, upload single files right we upload bulk data to your elasticsearch server so we had installed elasticsearch and kibana on a Mac and we also talked about the procedure to actually run Elasticsearch in Kibana on Windows or a Mac.
In this video, we'll talk about the REST APIs which are provided by Elasticsearch. There are four, and also talk also get into uh, how searching works in Elasticsearch. So we'll see the basics of searching as well. Now, just to have a recap of what we had done in the previous video, I'll run Elasticsearch again from my terminal and then also show how to actually uh, add some data or index some data into our Elasticsearch uh, index. So let's get started. First, we run Elasticsearch. So we go inside the folder and then go inside the binary folder again and use dot slash Elasticsearch to run it. Now, uh, I could skip this part where I wait for Elasticsearch to actually uh, get the server running. But if there are any errors that come up, I'd like to uh, solve those errors real time uh, just to make sure that you also don't get the same errors. And if you do, you know how to solve them. So let's just wait and hope that Elasticsearch server runs properly. I think it looks good. Uh, the health status has changed from red to yellow, so that's good. Uh, let's wait. And yeah, let's test it. So uh, localhost uh, port 9200 is where your Elasticsearch server is going to be there. So let's refresh this. And yes, uh, you, as you can see, Elasticsearch is up and running. Now we need to run Kibana. So we had talked about Kibana in the previous video. Kibana is a data visualization tool for Elasticsearch. So the data which you index on Elasticsearch can be visualized and it can do a lot of uh, other features as well uh, on Kibana. And to run Kibana, we have a similar procedure. So get inside the folder, go inside bin and then run Kibana. I think Kibana is a bit faster than Elasticsearch when it comes to setting up the server. Uh, I think because Elasticsearch has to load everything which we had indexed back, so it has some data in it. It also has to manage that data. But since Kibana is just uh, an abstraction or a visualization tool for Elasticsearch, it takes a bit less time. So as you can see, uh, it has begun. and. Uh, as you can see, the status has been changed from yellow to green, so we are ready. And yeah, uh, before we go, uh, as you can see, the server is running at localhost port 5601. So we check that port now. Just refresh this. And yes, so Kibana is also up and running. Now, uh, we had talked about this little hack uh, in the previous video where uh, instead of copying every uh, command uh, as a curl and running it on a command prompt or terminal, we can use something called as the developer tools uh, in Kibana and use that to actually run our code uh, or uh, add some data to Elasticsearch. It is a very good way to actually see the output in real time as it happens and also debug your code when you actually uh, add something to Elasticsearch. So yeah, let's get started. So in the previous video, we were here. So we were trying to index some documents uh, to Elasticsearch. So let's do that, let's do that again. So we had used put, uh, so put is an API, uh, index API, we'll talk about APIs in a bit. We had used that to actually add something or add some data to Elasticsearch. Let's use post. So put and post can be used uh, in either or situation, uh, but we'll not get into the depths of what is the difference because we can use both to add something or index something in, in, in our Elasticsearch. So let's do that. Let's copy it as curl and just paste it here. It's that easy. Now. Let's make it as the sixth document and let the name be, I don't know, uh, Elasticsearch. That's the best I could think of. Wow. And yes, awesome. So we use post here, uh, put here. Now let's use post and make it seven. And let the name be Elasticsearch again and as you can see uh, it was created primary term 7 sequence 6 so it starts from 0 to 6 awesome now we know how to index some documents let's actually talk about the different kinds of uh, rest apis which elasticsearch provides so there are four major rest apis which are provided by elasticsearch the most important is the index api or how you actually add something to elasticsearch 
So it helps to add or update the JSON document in an index when a request is made to that respective index with specific mapping. So mapping is another property in, in Elasticsearch or another concept which we'll talk about in the next video. Mapping is very important to know how to structure your data and to add some conditions or add some boundaries to your data. For example, if I only want an integer where, the, where there is an age parameter, I can use mapping to do that. So we'll talk about mapping in the next video, but for now we'll talk about the REST APIs and we'll get into the basics of searching. So we have the index API which can be used to add uh, some JSON document into Elasticsearch. Next is the get API. So once we have some data in Elasticsearch, we have to get that back, right? We have to see what we have inside our index. So for that, we use the get API. So this API helps to extract type JSON object by performing a get request for a particular document. So as you can see, the Elasticsearch provides you very simple REST APIs which you can run in your browser to get some uh, data back or to put some data into it. You can also use uh, a software like Postman where you can uh, simulate uh, the APIs, the get and post APIs or you can use the dev tools by Kibana to do the same thing again. All of them do it, uh, do the same thing but uh, I think the console or the dev tools console by Kibana is the best way to do it because it helps you see the output right in front of you and there's nothing else other than uh, your query and the output. When you use Postman, there's a lot of other things which intimidate you or confuse you as uh, because it did to me. And if you use your browser, it is really not the best interface for that. So use the Kibana dev tools when you want to write a query and see the result instantly. Okay, next is the delete API. So if you want to delete a particular index, or delete some mapping, delete a document, you can do that by sending a delete request to Elasticsearch. And lastly is update. So if you want to update some documents which you have previously indexed into Elasticsearch, you can do that using the update API. Now, today we'll talk about the first two uh, APIs. We'll talk about index and get. So we just saw how index API works uh, to add something or to update a JSON document. And let's use the get API to actually uh, get some results back and also use the get API to know how search works. So uh, basically in Elasticsearch you want to search something so that means you want to see the results of that search right. So if I want to search for uh, Elasticsearch or search for programming knowledge I'll see uh, or I'll get some results back right. That is why we use the get API to perform searching in Elasticsearch. So let's see that in action. Uh, let me just close this. So, uh, let's actually just replace post with get and remove this. And let's see if we can get the seven document again. So, yes, so we get the seven document. Let's see if there's a six. Yes, is there a two? Yes, there is. Awesome. So, that is how we get uh, the documents back. And now, let's see how search works. So, again. Uh, to learn anything about Elasticsearch, the documentation is the place to go. They have an amazing documentation and they teach everything from scratch. So as you can see, we can use the get API to search for something. And I will not use this example because we don't have a bank index right now. We have a customer index with name. So let's see something which uh, goes good with name or to search with names. So yeah, this looks good. Uh, we have a get bank search and it matches uh, the address for bank. So similarly, uh, let's search for something which matches a name. So let's copy this as curl, go back here, remove this and put this on. So let me just tell you what is happening here. So we use the get API again and inside the get API we have the underscore search API. So the search API is used by the get uh, rest API and instead of bank we have customer because we are using the customer index here and this is the syntax of how you write a query. So you have two curly parentheses here and you have query inside it. So everything uh, works as a JSON document, so a key value pair. So it's very easy to read and very intuitive to understand what's happening here. So you can just read this in simple English. So I have a query and I want to match something and that is the address to this particular name. So if this was a bank, I would this query would match everything which had mill lane in it every address which had mill in it. But since we have customer here and here we have name, let's actually see if we can find something. So let's find Elasticsearch and see if that exists in our database. Okay, so 
uh, it did not time out, so time out is false. That means we found something. Uh, successful is one. Awesome. Uh, hits. So hits is the number of uh, elements which you find uh, which have the name as Elastic Search. So we have two. We have the index six, which is Elastic Search, and seven as Elastic Search again. So it also searched for the substring Elastic Search in this entire string. So that is how good the query is and the search API is. So yeah, this is how you can actually search in Elasticsearch. Logstash is a tool based on the filter pipes patterns for gathering, processing and generating the logs or events. It helps in centralizing and making real-time analysis of logs and events from different sources. Logstash is written on JRuby programming language that runs on a Java virtual machine. Hence, you can run Logstash on different platforms. It collects different types of data like logs, packets, events, transactions, timestamps, etc. from almost every type of source. The data source can be social data, e-commerce data, news, financial data, IoT devices, mobile devices, etc. So Logstash is a plugin based data collection and processing engine. It comes with a wide range of plugins that make it possible with easily configured to collect process and forward data in many different architectures. Processing is organized into one or more pipelines. In each pipeline, one or more input plugins receive or collect data that is then placed on an internal queue. This is by default small and held in memory, but can be configured to be larger and persisted on disk in order to improve reliability and resiliency. So let's talk about some general features. Logstash, Logstash can collect data from different sources and send to multiple destinations. It can also handle multiple HTTP requests and respond data. Logstash can handle all types of logging data as we discussed and some more include Apache logs, Windows event logs, data over network protocols, data from standard input and more. So it can work on all your operating systems and can deal with any type of data which you want it to handle. Logstash also provides a variety of filters, which helps the user to find more meaning in the data by passing and transforming it. Next, Logstash can also be used for handling census data in IoT. Let's talk about some key concepts when we jump into Logstash. So the first is the event object. It is the main object in Logstash and it encapsulates the data flow in the Logstash pipeline. So, Logstash uses this object to store the input data and add extra fields created during the filter stage. Logstash also offers an event API to developers to manipulate such events. Next is the pipeline. It comprises of data flow stages in Logstash from input to output. The input data is entered in the pipeline and is stored in the form of an event, then sends an output destination in the user or end system desirable format. We saw the diagram of a pipeline in the previous slides and that is the definition right here. So let's talk about what is inside the pipeline. So the first stage of the pipeline is the input, which is used to get the data in Logstash for further processing. Logstash offers various plugins to get data from different platforms. Some of the com most commonly used platforms are file systems, Redis, Syslog and Beats. The middle stage of Logstash pipeline is the filter with the actual processing of events takes place. A developer can use predefined regex patterns from Logstash to create sequences for differentiating between fields in the events and criteria of accepted events. The last stage in the Logstash pipeline is output. With the output events can be formatted into the structure required by the destination systems. Lastly, it sends the output event after complete processing to the destination by using plugins. Some of the most commonly used plugins are Elasticsearch, File, Graphite, StatSD, etc. What we are concerned about in this tutorial is this tutorial is Elasticsearch. How we can use Logstash to actually input, input files into Elasticsearch. Let's talk about the advantages of Logstash. Logstash offers regex pattern sequences to identify and parse the various fields in an input event. Logstash supports a variety of web servers and data sources for extracting logging data. It also provides multiple plugins to pass and then transform the logging data into any desirable format and in this case it's going to be JSON. It is a centralized 
software which makes it easy to process and collect data from different servers. As we talked about, Logstar also uses the HTTP protocol which enables a user to upgrade Elasticsearch versions without having to upgrade Logstash in a lock step. There are a lot of disadvantages with Logstash but uh, I am mainly concerned with these two. So, Working with Logstash can sometimes be a little complex as it needs a very good understanding and an analysis of the input logging data. So as a beginner, it can be very hard or intimidating to actually get into Logstash. And we'll talk about some workarounds for this. Uh, we'll talk about a tool which I have developed, which you can use to index files into Elasticsearch, uh, a lot of files without using Logstash. But at some point uh, when you are scaling up, you have to stop making your own tools and uh, give into Logstash. And that is when Logstash can be a bit too complex, but uh, once you get the hang of it, it becomes very easy to use it. Next, the filter plugins are not generic. So you have to find a method so that you are able to correctly sequence the patterns and avoid errors when you're passing files into Logstash and then output it to something else. So yeah, that was a very simple introduction of what Logstash is. Now we can go ahead and install Logstash and also stash our first event. So basically we are going to perform a hello world of Logstash now. So uh, the best way to learn about Logstash is the documentation. So any ELK stack, Elasticsearch, Logstash or Kibana can be perfectly learned and understood with the documentation itself. So during these tutorials, I'll also refer to documentation uh, every single time and uh, use some pieces of code from the documentation because they explain the concept very easily. So uh, the link to all these websites will be in the description below. So you can check them out and start from right there. There'll also be a very good introduction to Logstash, a very good blog, and some other blog references which I have used to prepare for this tutorial. Okay, so just like Elasticsearch, uh, the installation process is going to be the same as we discussed for Elasticsearch and Kibana. So the first step is to check whether your Java version is right or not. So make sure that you have Java installed, and once you run this in your command prompt or terminal, uh, something like this should show up. So there is some uh, extra cases for Linux, Linux systems as well. So make sure you read them before you jump into any uh, downloading step. You can also install a binary and go ahead with that. I think that is what I did for this tutorial. I have a MacBook Air. So I downloaded the targ.gz file and directly placed that into my folder. Then there are some other ways of doing it. You can find the way which it's comfortable with you. Uh, people who use Mac OS and you use the homebrew packet manager, they can also use these two steps, which I think are the most easiest and simplest step to download a lock touch on a Mac OS and start uh, working with it. So once you do it, let me show you how it looks like. So you will have your lock touch folder in your downloads uh, folder again but I have dragged it to my home folder because I have Elasticsearch, Kibana and Logstash at the same place. So I can use them together in the same directory. Then once you go inside, you have a binary file in which you have all the Logstash uh, executables and you can use these to start Logstash. So we'll see how that happens in a bit. So yeah, uh, make sure that you have, uh, it is recommended that you have your Elasticsearch server, Kibana and Logstash folders at the, in the same directory or at the same level so that it's easier for you to uh, manipulate them at the same level and also use them side by side. So that is why I make sure that all my folders uh, for the ELK stack are in the same level. So once that is done, let's see how we can start our first event. So again, I'll be using the documentation because it has a very handy documentation which you can use all the time to actually understand how Logstash works. So as we discussed previously, a Logstash pipeline has two required elements, the input and the output, and an optional element called as the filter. The input, the input plugins consume data from a source, the filters modify the data, and the output drives to the destination. And here the destination is Elasticsearch. So we're going to uh, perform an event. We're going to write something in the standard input and use that and check if that Logstash has actually logged that event or not. So to test the Logstash uh, installation, we run the most basic Logstash pipeline. So this is the most basic one. So let's do this. Let's copy the first line of code 
and we cd inside the folder so we are inside log stash now let me increase the size so that it's clear yeah, i think this is good yeah so let's do that again we cd into log stash then the next is to perform this line of code so we go inside bin log stash e and write this piece of uh, configuration so while this sets up i think it is currently setting up so we need to wait for that uh, the e flag here enables you to specify your configuration directly from the command line so that is what the use of this is the e flag here is that you can directly specify a command on the terminal or else you have to always make a different file make a different configuration file and then extract the commands from that file okay so now we can uh, test things very easily because of this uh, the pipeline in the example takes input from standard input so we'll be taking input from stdin and also moves that to standard output so std out is the standard output here and it happens in structured format so once we see pipeline main started we can uh, then enter what we want to enter so as you can see it's now uh, currently configuring so we need to wait for this we need to make sure that there are no errors while log stash is building up so once you see successfully started log stash api uh, endpoint we can start uh, running our hello world example so let's start with hello world so let's say hello world and as you can see uh, we have a timestamp we have a host my name and the message which we just logged. So now you can uh, type as many examples as you want. So hello, Ronak, hello again. And we, as we can see, uh, log stash is logging every single element. Uh, in this video, we'll talk, we'll talk more about Elasticsearch and uh, how search works in Elasticsearch, how you can uh, figure out the basics. And we'll also talk about how we can use multiple queries in Elasticsearch to search for data efficiently so uh, in the previous videos we have talked about how to uh, download Elasticsearch, how to get it up and running we talked about how to set up kibana as well and how we can use kibana to actually look at the data in Elasticsearch. we also talked about this uh, technique where we can actually run queries on kibana for Elasticsearch. so we'll talk about that again and we also index some data into Elasticsearch so that we can see that it's working properly so uh, in the previous video, uh, I talked about uh, how the best way to learn Elasticsearch is to go through documentation. So I'll continue with the documentation as well. And we'll look at the examples given in documentation and start learning from there again. So this is where we had stopped in the previous video. Uh, we talked about how to index some documents. Uh, there's also a video where we talked about uh, how the APIs work. So Elasticsearch works on the REST API. We talked about different kind of APIs which uh, Elasticsearch provides and that information was uh, enough to actually get started with actually searching and actually uh, working with the main purpose of Elasticsearch and why it is preferred over other NoSQL databases. So to start learning about how search works, we need to index some data, uh, not uh, very less data, but some data in bulk. So we'll start with that. And in the, uh, Elasticsearch documentation helps you here as well. So uh, we have this data here called the account, accounts.json. So let's just see that for now. So this is a lot of data which we can actually uh, use uh, to search for. So we'll be using this data uh, as our example data and uh, talk about how we can actually search for data efficiently inside the JSON files. So when we have a lot of documents to index, uh, you can submit them in batches using the bulk API. So we'll be using the bulk API right now uh, by Elasticsearch. And this actually makes the operation significantly faster uh, when you are comparing that to individual uh, files that have been operated to Elasticsearch. So if you have a if you have 100 files, uh, you can use the bulk API to actually divide the 100 files into batches and send them rather than uh, iteratively uploading every single file for 100 iterations. So the way you divide uh, your batches of 100 uh, depends on the document size and the complexity. So as you can see here, uh, it also depends on the indexing, the search load and the resources available to your cluster. So it also depends on the kind of uh, memory you have in your computer. So according to them, according to the documentation, a good place to start is with batches of 1000 to 5000 and the total payload between 5 MB to 15 MB. 
you can see the payload information in the Elasticsearch details. So we'll talk about that later. And also they want you to experiment so that you can find the sweet, sweet spot for yourself. So yeah, let's get started. Let's uh, start by uploading some documents using the bulk API. So we'll be following these lines, uh, guidelines by Elasticsearch. So I have downloaded the accounts.json file from here. So you can just copy all of this and uh, paste them to a file which is named as accounts.json. And this is how it looks. So it has some bank details, your account number, your balance, first name, last name, age, gender, the address, your employer, email and so on. So uh, these are the two uh, curl commands that we can use to actually upload the data on Elasticsearch. So as you can see, first is an ex post or a post API where you post uh, the accounts.json file uh, to an index called as bank. So it creates an index called as bank and it uh, uses the bulk API here, underscore bulk, and then refreshes uh, the server. And then after that, uh, we use this command, uh, cat indices, where we can actually display all the indexes which we have. So we have, uh, since we have created a new index called as bank with this command, we then run this command to see uh, if it has actually been done, uploaded or not. And hopefully we should see this line here. So don't worry about the health being yellow or green. Uh, anything other than red is completely fine. So if you have a health as yellow or green, that's completely fine. I think the server I am currently using uh, for Elasticsearch 7.6, uh, the health is yellow. I think we saw that in the previous discussion, in the previous video. So let's get started. Again, uh, go to your Elastic, make sure that you have Elasticsearch downloaded. Go inside the bind the folder and get it running. So just make sure uh, that uh, the processes it runs behind the scenes, uh, all of these, just make sure that you give a glance at it so that you don't uh, get any errors right now. So we have no plugins loaded as of now. We'll be getting to this later. Let's see if the server I have runs smoothly. So it has been started. Uh, it has been published the address localhost port 9300. And the cluster health has been changed from red right to yellow. So I think we're good to go. Now, we'll be using these commands, uh, curl commands to actually index our bulk data into Elasticsearch. So let's make a new, open up a new terminal. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the JSON file which I have is on the desktop. So let's go to desktop. And then let's copy the command the first command for now and press enter and as you can see here uh, it was just running it on the left and as you can see all of these uh, json files have been uploaded now we can see that they have been uploaded and you can see the result has been created but we don't know how many failed and how many uh, passed the uploading process so for that we use this so when we use this command as you can see here for bank, uh, the second one, the health is yellow, uh, open. Uh, the index has been created as bank. It has its own unique ID and the documents that were uploaded were thousand. And I think that is what uh, the documentation also has. So yeah, now we're good to go. We have our data into Elasticsearch successfully. Uh, second thing now is to actually uh, run Kibana. So I forgot that initially, so let's do it right now. Uh, go to Kibana's folder, make sure it's installed. Go to pin. And the same way you run Kibana is how you run Elasticsearch. Uh, let's wait for it to load. So uh, currently I was able to run the command using the command line because I have curl installed on my computer. But uh, if you don't, then uh, we had talked about a different way to actually uh, use these commands. Uh, it, it was through Kibana. So you need to have curl installed in a computer to use it from Kibana as well, but it's much easier to do it with Kibana because you can see the outputs clearly. So let's see how that works now. So yeah, I think the server is ready. And let me just look for the port where we have it. So the server is running at localhost 5601. Let's copy that and paste it here. Oh wow, not that, just this. 
I know, I'm sorry, I didn't want to search this. And I think we're good to go. Yeah. So now we have opened Kibana and let's see how we can run our commands for Elasticsearch via Kibana. So go to dev tools. And as you can see, you have this really nice console here where you can actually uh, give some commands and get the outputs directly. So uh, let's try uh, what did we want first. So we wanted a cat indices this. So let's copy that and paste it here. And as you can see, uh, you get the output directly here. And as you can see, the command also changed. So we had a curl command and it directly got converted to the API. So we have the get API and we have to uh, cat displays the indices. So that's how we can actually use the console by Kibana to actually see our output directly. So yeah, now we are so we have successfully indexed some data and now let's start searching. So after this, when you click on the next uh, heading that is start searching, we can actually see how uh, they want us to search. So what we need to remember before we get into this is that Elasticsearch is a NoSQL database. So everything, uh, is in a JSON format, so you have a key value pair. And uh, even when searching for it, you use JSON format with the REST APIs to actually perform the search. And this actually makes it really intuitive to use because you can uh, just for form these JSON files and read them as English. So we'll just try it right now. So without any context, without knowing anything about what this is doing, we can actually read and understand what's happening here. So. Uh, without learning about what the search API is, uh, you want to get something from bank, the bank index. You have a query, okay. So we don't know what query is right now. And you have a query which says match all and there's nothing inside. So it basically says match everything is what I'm being, what I'm actually understanding from it. And next you sort uh, the account number in an ascending order. So uh, as you can see, it's very simple to read. So you, uh, the example states that it retrieves all documents in bank index sorted by the account number, simple as that. And you get the output directly. So it's really easy to write these uh, queries uh, when you compare it to SQL because you have to actually put your brain and actually sit for some time to actually generate the SQL queries. But here you can actually just write it the way you, you know, uh, thought or uh, think about it in your mind. So. Once you have ingested some data into the index, you can search it by sending requests. So you're sending a REST API request to the underscore search endpoint. Now, this is called as Elasticsearch query DSL. Uh, what we're gonna do here. So these are the basics for that. So let's uh, start with this. So let's copy this and see if this works for us. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, so it took 32 uh, milliseconds. Uh, we have a lot of things going on here. So let's actually see what all of them mean. So we have the same uh, output. Um, this is what all of it means. So the took says how long it took Elasticsearch to run the query in milliseconds. So it took us 32 milliseconds to do it. Then the next is timed out with the request of search timed out or not. So this might happen sometimes where uh, Elasticsearch is looking for something which doesn't have so it times out, the request times out, uh, just how a simple uh, uh, REST API works. And then you have shards. So we talked about shards in the first introduction to Elasticsearch video, where we talked about how uh, Elasticsearch works behind the scenes. So it divides your document into shards, and then each shard had its own number of documents, and then it loops through all the shards to see if it has found a document or not. So the shards uh, key here, uh, shows how many sh shards were searched and a breakdown of how many shards success succeeded, failed, or was skipped. Max score is something which is really important and we're going to talk about this intensively uh, in the next uh, few set of videos. Uh, it is a score of how, uh, of the most relevant document found. So the score is null here because uh, we didn't match anything. So when we actually use the query uh, capability, then that is when we have a score where you give a score to each and every uh, result you get. So higher the score, more the relevant document is for the query. Uh, less the score, the less relevant it is. Next, uh, hits.total.value. So how many matching documents were found. Hits.sort, uh, it sorts position. Hits.score, again, the relevant score. Uh, not duplicable when using match all, so we need to know that. Now, 
the next thing which we need to know about the search function, uh, the search API is that each search request is self-contained. So there is no uh, information that is being maintained across these requests. So each request is an indiv individual request and there will not be uh, any set of information uh, that connects any uh, request before it or after it. So that's how REST API works. So each REST API request has its own you know, information and it's completely separate from the other ones. So that is something which you need, uh, which we need to know because uh, when it comes to SQL, that might not be the case, but for NoSQL and for particularly the Elasticsearch, uh, each request is self-contained. Now let's uh, look at some other uh, ways we can actually search for it. So now uh, to search through pa page hits or uh, to search through the search, and we have the count number in order, but you just need uh, everything from 10 through 90. So start from 10, or start from size 10, uh, sorry, start from 10, and only search until the next 10 files. So 10 to 19, and we can run the same thing. You can copy it as curl, or view in console directly opens up this page. So Elasticsearch uh, has this really handy thing called view in console. It opens up the exact same page and runs it for you, but we know how to do that. So we'll be doing this right now. And as you can see, it only showed you the top 10, uh, starting from 10. Uh, all the variables so you have account number balance starting from 10 11 to 19 pretty simple to actually use it directly uh, and now this is good because we are using the sort function uh, from and size which are easy to learn but what we need to do is actually uh, search for something internally search for a phrase search for a name or a number so that is where the query function comes into the picture so now uh, let's uh, use the query function match the address uh, which is mill lane or mill e or lane completely so this piece of function will match the address key to the mill lane value uh, but when it only searches a substring so it contains either mill or lane so let's copy this again and see how this works As you can see, it searches for all the addresses where it's mill lane. So 198 mill lane, uh, 990 mill road. So it either ha it either should have mill or lane, but there might be a time where you need both mill lane to be present in the address. And that is where uh, you use match phrase. Yeah. So now this will match the entire phrase as you can see, and only matches the addresses that contain the phrase mill lane. So let's run this now. Yeah, as you can see, there's only one address which has mill lane together in it, and that is how it works. So now, uh, these are very simple queries. Uh, these are single queries, and they're easy to use. But usually, you have to construct complex queries, just like SQL. And for that, you can use something called as bool here. So you can use bool to combine multiple queries criteria. You can designate the criteria as must match, uh, should match, or must not match. So it's either required or it's desirable. Uh, it can have it or it's, it should not be present in your results. So let's see an example here. Uh, we need uh, to search the bank index for accounts that belong to customers who are 40 years old but excludes anyone who lives in Idaho or the ID of that place. So it's a complex query so we need to use bool and uh, the customers must be of age 40 so it must match the age as 40 but it should exclude or it should not match anyone who lives in id so it must not match people the, who live in the state of id so pretty simple pretty clear we'll actually uh, write our own queries in the next video uh, we, i'm just going through the queries given by elastic search but in the next video we'll actually write our own queries and see how easy it is to write them from scratch let's uh, copy this and run so that we know how it works as you can see uh, it matched everybody from age 40 age 40 and none of them have the state id as uh, idaho so it's m o o r p a m t etc etc and yeah so use bool to create some complex queries here now let's take it a bit more complex and use something called as filter so it uh, filter affects whether or not the document is included in the results. 
but it does not contribute to how documents are scored. So now for suppose uh, you want a request that uses a range filter. So you want to range between some files. So for example, uh, you want people who are uh, not underage, uh, but also who are not senior citizens. So you want people who uh, have their starting age from 18 and they go up till 50 or 60. So that is where uh, the range filter can come into the picture. Here they have used it to check the balances. So if you want to get the results of accounts with a balance between $20,000 and $30,000 inclusive, what you do is you have the range filter uh, and you want to range the balance which has the amount. And now we have something called as GTE and LTE here. So GTE is greater than or equal to LTE is less than or equal to. So what this is doing is that match all the documents but filter them by range on the balance where the balance is greater than or equal to $20,000 and less than $30,000. So let's copy this and just make sure that it's running again. It should be running. And yeah, as you can see, uh, all the hits here have the balance, can I see the balance? Yeah, which is greater than $20,000 and less than 30. And that is how you actually run uh, or have uh, generate queries, simple queries using Elasticsearch. In today's video, uh, we'll go through documentation. Now, as I've been talking about in the previous videos that uh, the Elasticsearch documentation is the best way to learn about Elasticsearch. The documentations are really clear. They are not complicated at all. And they are straight to the point. In this video, we'll talk about query and filter context. We'll understand what a query means and what the word filter or the keyword filter means in the Elasticsearch queries. And we'll also talk about what is the difference between them. We'll talk about re 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 relevant scores and how all of it matters. And in the next video, we'll actually uh, write some of our own queries. So we'll actually uh, form a situation where we have to use Elasticsearch. We'll form a situation where we want to use query and filter in context and the next video will actually write down some queries so that we can actually learn from them and see if they can be implemented on a real database. So let's start. So uh, before we jump on to this, uh, let's just make sure that we have Elasticsearch running and Kibana running. So let me just go and do that right now. I don't know if we need if we need to get it running for this video or not, but let's just find out. So Elastic search and it's running and open a new tab so that we can run Kibana as well. So let me just clear this, go to Kibana, bin and run Kibana the same way we run Elastic search. So looks like Elastic search is ready. And now we are waiting for Kibana to run. So let's wait for that. And yeah, so Elasticsearch is running right now at 9300 port. And the cluster indices have been recovered from red to yellow, so we are good to go. So you might not always be green, your cluster health. Or sometimes it gets to yellow and uh, there is a reason for that. But uh, since this is just a video to teach about query and filter, we will not worry about the health of the clusters. And yeah, so even Elasticsearch and Kibana both are running. Let's just make sure that they are running on the browser as well. So port 9300, 9200 is the publisher term, sorry. Let's just make sure that it's running. Yes, it is. And let's just make sure that Kiwana is running as well. So it is running at 5601 port of localhost. Once we get these running, we can start with understanding what query and filter mean. Yes. So let's come back here. Now, in the previous video, we talked about the basics of searching, how we can search in Elasticsearch. Uh, we wrote, uh, we talked about some simple queries which were given in documentation. And uh, there was something called as a relevant score Right, when you get the output of an Elasticsearch query. So we have to talk about that first because it's the most important thing uh, which Elasticsearch provides. So by default, Elasticsearch uh, uh, you know, matches the search results by something called as relevant scores. 
So what a rel relevant score does is that it measures how well each document matches a query. So we'll understand how perfectly the document which you're searching for fits the query and assigns a score to it. So the relevant score is a positive floating point number and it's under the underscore score meta field of the search API. So and the relation between uh, the score and the relevance is proportional. So the higher the score, the more relevant the document is. And while each query type can calculate relevant score differently, score calculation also depends on two important things. So it depends on the query or the filter context. So let's talk about query first. Uh, in the Elasticsearch uh, context, a query basically answers this question. How well does this document match the query clause? So how well does this document match what you're asking for? So if I, if I have a query which says that, try to find all the documents which match the word uh, Python. So, and if I have a database full of Python notebooks or Python uh, teaching books, then it'll match all the books which have the clause Python in it. And for example, if there is a book called as the uh, introduction to Python, that might get a really high, uh, high relevance score than something as uh, programming languages, Python and many more. So how you phrase your query is going to define the relevance score and give a relevance score to it based on the query which you write. So that is something uh, what query means. Let's go to the filter context now. So filter is basically as the name for this, a filter for yes or no. So it just checks whether the document matches the query clause or not. So unlike uh, query, uh, the query context, it does not uh, care about how relevant it is. It just cares whether it matches document or not. So you can think of the query context as linear regression where you have continuous variables. And you can think about filter context as a logical regression problem where you have different classes. And you just don't have continuous variables but discrete variables here. So it's either yes or no, a binary classification and here, you can get continuous results based on the relevant score you have. So basically, uh, just to understand how filter context means with an example, uh, we talked about uh, using uh, having a query which matches the document which have the word Python in it. Now, I only want the books of Python which are between 2015 and 2016. So I'll have a filter where I will want the query to only search for books which are greater than or equal to 2015 and less than and equal to 2016. So if, uh, so how it works is that Elasticsearch behind the scenes will go through all your documents. It will check for the range. And if the range is under, uh, if the range is correct for the document, then it is yes, the answer is yes. And the docu document is shown to you. If it's no, then it's not shown to you. So it answers a simple question, which is does this document match the query clause or not? So frequently uh, filters will be cached automatically. So this is how it works behind the scenes and your uh, performance will be very fast. Then let's see an example of how filter and query work. So we have a very nice example here given by Elasticsearch directly. So we are going to search, use the search API. We have a query, indicates query context. Then we have a bool. Bool is basically having multiple queries inside one single query. So if you want to have multiple things uh, to be extracted from the documents, you use bool. We talked about this in the previous video. Next, uh, must match. So the query must match the title search. It must match the content elastic search. So what it means is that until now, find all the documents which match the title as search and it matches the content as elastic search. Next, let's filter. Let's filter the term as status is published. So it will only put, uh, get the documents which have the title search, content elastic search, and they are published. And they have a range. So if it's published after 2015. So what this query here is doing is that it's using both query and filter in its context and giving us back uh, the data where uh, the document title matches search the document content matches Elasticsearch. Uh, it is published and the published date is greater than 2015. So this is how uh, we can use complicated queries 
and simplify them and use them using Elasticsearch. In the previous video, we talked about query and filter context. And in this video, we will start writing some example queries of our own. Just to have a recap, we talked about the query and filter context where we talked about what are relevant scores, what does query mean, uh, how does the score affect the query, and what are filters. We also uh, ran some examples where we talked about how these work in detail. And in today's video, we'll actually talk about how we can write our own queries to find something in a database. Now, before we uh, write some queries, we had talked about indexing documents uh, in one of the previous videos. I'll link it in the description. And for writing queries for this particular video, we have to have the accounts.json data indexed in our Elasticsearch database. So make sure you follow this website and uh, you have downloaded the data set into Elasticsearch and indexed it properly. Once that is done, we can uh, start writing our own query. So before we jump onto that, let me first uh, make sure that we have Elasticsearch running. And let's also run Kibana now. Let's just wait for Elasticsearch and Kibana to get running so that we can start writing the query. So until this happens, let's just see what the query is. So we have an example here. So we have to write a query to search for addresses that have either a lane or a street in the name. So the address should either have a lane or a street and have a balance between 20,000 and 30,000. So uh, to understand the query properly, let's just uh, wait for Kibana and Elasticsearch to load so that we can understand uh, the parameters, uh, the key value pair of our JSON data so that we can understand uh, this question better and then start writing the query for it. Let's just make sure it is up and running. Yeah, I think it is. Let's just go uh, refresh Kibana and see if it's here. Yes. So now before we jump on to Writing the query, let's actually uh, create an index pattern on Kibana. So we're using the bank database. So let's just create that so that we can visualize our data set in, Q on, in Kibana as well. And we are good to go. So let's see how our data looks like on Kibana. And yeah, awesome. So all of our data can now be visualized on Kibana properly. So we can see a table view or a JSON view of the data. That's perfect. Now, as you can see, our data set has an ID, the index bank, a score, which is zero by default. It has the account number, the address, age, balance, city, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now uh, we can make some, uh, we can write some queries based on the data which we have here. So as you can see, we need to write a query to search for addresses. So we have to deal with the addresses uh, tag and it has some data here. So some kind of addresses. So it has lanes, it has a street, so it, it can have lanes or streets, streets again. Uh, let's see, it can have a court. So different, different names for different addresses. So we want addresses that have either a lane or a street in the name and have a balance between 20,000 and 30,000. So the balance has to be between 20,000 and 30,000, as you can see. Now, yeah, let's start writing. So the first thing which we need to understand uh, is the kind of API which we have to call. So we have talked about the different kinds of APIs Elasticsearch uses. So the first thing which you need to do is understand what we have here and what we want. So we need to write a query to search something. So when we search for something, we have to get the results back, right? So it's a get API. And we have to search in the bank index and use the search API inside guess, get. Let's start. So we have to write a query. Let's just have the basic skeleton of our query so that we are sure what we have to do. Okay. So now we need two things. Let's divide the query into two parts. First is to search for addresses with the name uh, having lane or street in them. And the second part will be having a balance between 20,000 and 30,000. 
Now, uh, let's use both the query and the filter context here. So we can use the query context to actually understand how we can have street and lane both in the name. So it can either have both or either of them. So since we're using both query and filter, we should have a boolean, so bool. And let's see. So it should must have either a lane or a street. So a must and it should match. Now uh, it should match the address and something which I think is uh, go interesting here is that we don't have to have multiple match statements for lane and street. We can just have match lane and street here, right here. So that uh, how the match query works is that it searches for the string and the substring. So it searches for lane street, street and lane. So all of them will be included in the, a single query. We don't have to worry about the rest. Uh, if you have two match queries, even that works. But uh, since we can do the same kind of work in less lines of uh, less query lines, that works better. And next, we need to have a filter. So let's just write a filter now. Now we need a filter. So filter. Oh, I can't spell filter. Sorry about that. Now we need a filter. And I think we made some mistake. Oh, let's just, okay, let's just write it and then we can figure out the mistakes. So now we have a range. And the range is between the range is for what? It's for the balance. So the balance has to be between this and this, which has to be greater than 20,000 and less than 30,000. So let's write the range for balance. And it has to be greater than 20,000. And it has to be less than or equal to 30,000. Awesome. And let me just make sure this is right. Okay, so we don't need this since we just have one. We don't need this as well. And yeah, let's just check the indentations because I'm very particular about them. So query bool, the query goes here, must match the address lane or street. And you filter by this. Let's run this and see how it works. Yeah, so it took 40 milliseconds. We have total 85 hits. And the max score, the most relevant document was this. And it had lane and had the balance just greater than 20,000. And this way we have a lot of uh, hits. So it has lane, lane again, street and it's more than 20,000. So yeah, that is how we write an example query in Elasticsearch. Just to reiterate on what we had done here, we had we had to write a query to search for addresses that had either lane or street in the name and had a balance between 20 and 30,000. We started off with a get API, uh, a get search API, had a query, it had both query and context, sorry, query and filters. So it must have to match lane and street and I had to filter between the balance 20,000 and 30,000. So that is how we write a query. Uh, in today's video, we'll actually jump into compound queries, understand the different types of compound, query, compound queries that are available and see how they work. In the next video, we'll actually implement compound queries and try to also generate a use case example for it. In the previous video, we had a uh, written our own queries, uh, very simple basic queries to understand how qu uh, query and filter contexts work and also understand how the relevant score works. But today we're going to jump a bit uh, into the advanced concepts and understand uh, why compound queries are important. So just like a SQL database, even in US no SQL databases, you need to have, you need to write compound queries. And that is where you'll be working on most when you apply for a job. So let's just start. The first compound query which we're going to talk about which you guys probably already know is the boolean query 
so it is just a default query for combining multiple uh, query clauses for example as must should must not and filter clauses so whenever you use a boolean query you can uh, work with multiple queries at the same time so let's just see how uh, let's see an example of how this works so here in the example as you can see we use the boolean keyword uh, then uh, the way we read it intuitively is like this so first it should must match the term where the user is kimchi it should filter all the tags where the tag is tech it should not have people from the age greater than 10 and less than 20 it should also match the tags which is wow and elastic search the minimum number of matches that it should show is one and the boost or the amount, the relevant score that all of this should get is one so we'll talk about the boost uh, keyword here uh, in some time because that is something which is new but we get the idea boolean query uh, helps us uh, add or uh, use multiple queries at the same time the next one is boosting query so boosting uh, returns documents which match a positive query but reduce the score of documents which also match a negative query so this comes into handy when we actually deal with real life use cases so uh, let's uh, see the example here first and then we can uh, actually relate to a real life example so the example given by the documentation states that if you want uh, to up the score of the text which contains apple you give it a positive uh, score and if you want uh, negative scores to be assigned to pie tart fruit or crumble you assign them to a negative score now you can just specify that uh, a specific term should be positive or negative or you can also give uh, the score which you want them to have so here they want the negative term to have a boost of 0 0.5 so whenever you get an you get a text which has pie tart fruit crumble or tree they will be having a score of 0 0.5 now this can be helpful in a lot of ways uh, something which we are going to talk about is the covid 19 news so now there's been a lot of misinformation where people have been protesting that the people should not stay at home and they should actually go out and save the economy and there have been a lot of uh, efforts by uh, multiple organizations such as facebook and twitter where they are trying to uh, not show the news with support not staying at home so similarly uh, that is not exactly what to do with the elastic search but we get the idea that you jump up the positive terms where you talk about staying at home uh, social distancing quarantine and you give a negative score to news such as uh, you don't stay at home or you go out and save the economy that is how the boosting query works the next query and the last query which we're going to talk about for now is the constant score query now there might be some cases where uh, you would like some terms in your database to have a constant score while the others might have different scores so for example you always want uh, the name of a person to start by start with r so whenever you want that you can assign that a constant score and then when you search for those specific names you get a constant list of names and the other queries which you have the other queries which you have in your compound query will have a different scores so let's see how it works this is where the boost key term comes into the picture so constant score also works as a filter uh, uh, works in a filter context so basically what you're saying that what we're saying is that if you assign a constant score to a term just make sure that the term is there in the search results if it's not there leave it out of the picture and you can also assign it a custom score so if you want the score to be 1.2 or uh, 0.2 times the other search results you give it a boost of 1.2 and that is how a constant score query works in this video we'll actually write uh, the three uh, compound queries which we learned about in the previous video and see how they work now <clears throat> before starting the video we have our elastic search running and kibana running as well so that we can directly start writing the queries and get the results and these are the queries which we talked about we talked about the boolean query which is the default query for combining leaf or compound query clauses must should must not filter clauses and we talked about the boosting query where you can uh, assign positive and negative boosts uh, to your queries where the relevance of the score score of documents changes based on whether it's a positive query or a negative query and the last thing which we talked about in the previous video was the constant score query where it wraps uh, a query into another query and executes it in a filter context so all the matching documents are given the same constant score we talked about these we talked about uh, the individual 
working, how they work, how they can change and why are they important. Uh, in this video, we'll actually write some queries. So we'll actually make up some scenarios where we have to write some queries for a database. So uh, in the previous videos, we have talked about using the banking database, which was found in the documentation. So there, please check, I'll have the link in the description. You can download the database and index it to Elasticsearch. And now we can start writing our uh, queries. So the first query is the Boolean query. Now we talked about this before where we wrote our own queries. This was the first query which we wrote. But since it also is the first compound query, let's write again. So what we need to do here is that we need to write a query to search for addresses that have either a lane or a street in the name and have an account balance between 20,000 and 30,000. So since we're using the banking database, the database has the addresses and the balance of person. And we need to write a query to search for addresses that have either a lane or a street and have a balance between 20,000 and 30,000. So let's just start writing it. First, this is going to be a get API call to search. And we have a query. And inside a query, we have bool because we're going to use that. And inside bool, it should must match either lane or street. So let's write must first and let's write properly in our way, not autocomplete. So must match the address and the address can be lane or street. So, uh, wait, I think I missed the match. Yep. Must match the address. And uh, we have talked about in the previous videos is that uh, we have to match either lane or street, but match searches for the substring as well. So it searches for lane, street, and lane and street. So we don't have to write two match queries for searching for both. Now we're good. Now do. Now we need filter. Because we want to filter out a balance between 20,000 and 30,000. So filter, and then this is going to be a range. The field is balance greater than 20,000 or equal to and less than 30,000. And this is how we write a simple Boolean query where we have must and uh, the query context and the filter context uh, together in a single query. Let's run this. And as you can see, we get the output. We get total 85 hits. Uh, we get the church lane and it has around 23,000. We get pools lane with 24,000. So it's, uh, as you can see, the relevance score as well. And that is how a Boolean query works. This has, this had already been discussed in detail in the previous videos and I'll link that in the description as well. Next comes the boosting query where we actually uh, give a positive score to a certain query and negative to some based on, based on how we want it. So here we just have a simple use case where uh, we have to write a query to search for addresses that include church and lane both, but we want to prioritize church over lane. So uh, sometimes we have a database where uh, we want to find all the people uh, who are living in an area, but we want to uh, only prioritize people who live near a church or have a church in the names to prioritize. And that is where the relevance or the score of documents come into the picture and where boosting queries can really help a lot. So let's see how we would write this and actually uh, also give it a negative boost score as well, which uh, I think we've seen here. So let's give it a negative boost of 0 0.5 just to see how it works and see what the difference it makes. Again, we have a get request and search API, which we need to get back. Let's have some parentheses right there. So it's a query and what we're doing is boosting. Uh, the, the syntax, uh, I'm referring to this syntax here. So this is what I'm currently typing and I'm using the same uh, format or the structure of these queries so that I can understand them better. 
So don't worry about uh, knowing the syntax for how to write these queries. Just see the examples on the documentation, how they write it. It's pretty intuitive. It's pretty easy to understand that we are having a query. We are performing the boosting API. We have positive terms. We have negative terms. We are assigning some negative or positive boosts to it. And that is how it works. So don't worry about the syntax. Uh, the syntax can be learned or you don't have to worry about it. Worry about how to frame the queries based on what use case you have. So let's continue. We have positive and we have a term. So the term goes like a d d r e s s and the address is church. Okay, awesome. So we give two and now we have negative and we have a negative term, same as before. And the term is address and we want lane to be negative. Now skip to and give it a negative boost. So let's give it a 0 0.5 and see how that works. So here, what we did was we wanted to search for both church and lane, but prioritize, uh, get the church results first and the lane second. And you want the difference of that to be by 0 0.5. So let's see what I mean by that. Now we've run this and let's just focus on the score first. So we get two options, we get two outputs, church avenue and church lane. As you can see, uh, church lanes comes last and church avenue comes before. Now look at the score here, that's the score. The score is 5.99, let's take it as six. And the score for the second one is 2.99, let's take it as three. So the negative boost uh, reduce the score by half, exactly half. So the first uh, result which we get is 366 Church Avenue has a score of 5.99 and Church Lane has by 2.99. So in this way, you can not only uh, manipulate the order, but also the score of what you want and then have some uh, applications to it later. But this is how you can actually uh, manipulate your queries with boosting API. So the last compound query uh, for now, uh, we have two more left which we'll be discussing in the next video. But for now, we have the constant query where we make sure that they have the same relevance. So we'll be using the same example as before. We want church and lane both to be found, but with the same relevance. So let's see how we would write the query for that. And as you can see, I'm using Kibana, uh, the dev tools in Kibana right here, the uh, tool here, dev tools. And as you can see, you can re uh, write this in real time, uh, search for it. You don't have to do any curl commands as you know, copy as curl and run it on your terminal. You can use this console. It's pretty intuitive, pretty easy to use. And as you can see, I can, uh, I can have different parts of my query. So uh, just running this will not run the entire script. It will only run this part. And I can run each of the parts fragmented and individually, which is like really great. So let's write the third constant query, constant score query, sorry. Okay. So, get bank and we need search. So uh, just uh, make sure that before you see the implementation, you will just pause the video and try out uh, to try to write the query as well. Uh, there won't be much changes to do in the query. You can just see uh, the documentation, see their examples. Uh, I've been making the examples because uh, the documentation as I keep specifying is the easiest place to learn from and it's really good. You just see the way the structure in the which way they write their queries and you can just uh, follow the structure and write your own queries in the same way. So let's go query and the query has constant score and the filter has term and terminus address and church. I'm sorry about the sound uh, behind, just bear with me for some time. Okay, so it's church and lane. Let me just go back to church now. Yep. So this is for church. Everything, uh, all of it gets, uh, all the hits are only for church. And now I copy the same thing and do the same thing for lane. 
So if I don't do it for lane as well, I can just get the same outputs. I get church avenue and uh, church lane. So the database is put in that way so that we can do outputs. But if you have more uh, addresses which have church and lane common, you can just type lane here and you can get uh, the common score for lane as well. So yeah, for church, we run this and the output is church lane and church avenue. And you can see the score is 1.2 and 1.2, which we actually asked it to. So if you put as 1.00, we get the score as 1.0, 1.0. So yeah, so that is how we write compound queries using Elasticsearch in Elasticsearch. In this video, we'll talk about full text queries in Elasticsearch. In this playlist, in the previous videos, we've talked about how to set up Elasticsearch, uh, how to index our first query, how to upload multiple documents on Elasticsearch and we also talked about query DSL where we talked about query and filter context and compound queries. Now we move on to full text queries. So the full text queries enable you to search analyze text fields such as the body of an email. The query string is processed using the same analyzer that was applied to the field during indexing. Now full text queries can be grouped into the following queries. The first is intervals query. So an intervals query is a full text query that allows fine grained control of the ordering and proximity of matching terms. Let's see what this means. So the inter intervals query returns documents based on the order and proximity of matching terms. So the internal world's query uses matching rules constru constructed from a small set of definitions. These rules are then applied to terms from a specific field. Now, the definitions produce sequence of minimal intervals that span terms in a body of text. These intervals can be further combined and filtered by parent sources. Let's see the example request and understand what how internals intervals work. So here we have we are searching and we want to post uh, use a post API. And we're searching at my text, all of it. Uh, the order is true, so it's going to be ordered from top to bottom. And it's going to match my favorite food first. So there's going to be an order that is going to be followed. So it's my favorite food, no gaps, and it has to be ordered again. And after my favorite food, it should match any of the following. It should match hot water or cold porridge. So my favorite food is cold porridge can be a possible answer, the possible document that can be re, uh, retrieved. So as you can see here, the following intervals search re returns documents containing my favorite food immediately followed by hot water or cold porridge in the my text field. So in this way, we return the documents which are based on some order and the proximity of matching terms. So the search would match a my text value of my favorite food is cold porridge but it will not match when it's cold. My favorite food is porridge. So the order here is very important. That is why we use the intervals query. Now the next query is the match query, which we have already seen before a lot of times, but we'll uh, reiterate and see how it works again. So the match query is the standard query for performing full text queries, including fuzzy matching and phrase or proximity queries. Let's see the match query in detail. So uh, we have used the mask match query before. So we'll just uh, make sure that you understand the example they've given in the documentation. It returns documents that match a provided text number, date, or Boolean value. The provided text is analyzed before matching. So we haven't used analyzers in Elasticsearch yet, and we'll use them in the next video. But until then, let's understand how the match query works in general. So here we have an example query where we want to get some results back and we match a value with the queries. This is a test. So this will return all the documents which have either this is a test entirely or has this or is or a uh, or test. So it is going to match the entire string or even a substring. That is what the match query is used for. Let's see the next query. The next query is match bool prefix. So what does it do? So match bool prefix query creates a bool query that matches each term as a term query, except for the last term. 
which is matched as a prefix query. So we have talked about what bool is. Bool is to uh, use complex queries or to make multiple queries in one single uh, form. So we can use the bool query or the match bool prefix query to match each term as a term query except for the last term. Let's see how this works in depth. So a match bool prefix query analyzes its input and constructs a bool query from the terms. Each term except the last is used in a term query. So the last term is used in a prefix query. So let's see an example. Now, if we want to find all the messages which start or which have quick brown and has anything which starts from an F later or the prefix is F, this is how we write the query. Now, this will match all the message values which have quick brown fox, quick brown face, quick brown fountain, etc. etc. Now, this query can be also written in this way, which is much more easy to understand, but it's a bit more complicated to write. So here we have query bool and it should match the term quick as you know. It should also match the term brown but the prefix of the message can be f. So the message the value of the message key should have quick and brown and any word that starts with the letter f or has the prefix f. So we look at the difference between match bool prefix and match phrase prefix later. Until then, let's move on to the next full text query. The next full text query is match phrase query. I think we have seen this before as well. So like the match query, but used for matching exact phrases or word proximity matches. Let's see what that means. So the match query analyzes the text and creates a phrase query out of the analyzed text. So let's see what that means. Now here we have the same message, this is a test, but we have a match phrase instead of match. Now if this were a match query, then it would match the entire string or also a substring. But for match phrase, it would exactly match the entire string and not the substring. This is the difference between match phrase and match. So this is not case sensitive, so it will match everything that has a capital T or a capital I or capital A or any capital letters in between, but it should have the entire phrase inside the sentence or inside the value of message. If the entire phrase is not available inside the message value, then it will not return that document as a relevant document. That is what match phrase query was about. The next is match phrase prefix query. So it is just like the match query, but it does a wildcard search on the final word. Let's see what that means. So the match phrase prefix query returns documents that contain the words of a provided text in the same order as provided. So as you know, quick brown F. So quick brown, the same order must be followed. The last term of the provided text is treated as a prefix matching any words that begins with that term. So let's see what that means. Here, the following search returns documents that contain phrases beginning with quick brown F in the message field. Now this search would match a message value of quick brown fox or two quick brown ferrets, but not the fox is quick and brown. So the order here matters for the match phrase prefix because quick brown F is treated as a phrase the entire string is treated as a complete single phrase. So quick brown F should always be there. So here, as you can see, quick brown fox matches, quick brown ferrets also matches. The two can be before it, but since it is matching quick brown ferrets in the same order, it is a relevant document, but not the fox is quick and brown. So this is the difference between match phrase prefix and match boolean prefix. So let's just see the difference again. So the important difference is that the match phrase prefix query matches its terms as a phrase, but the match bool prefix query can match its term in any position. So here it can be quick brown f or brown quick f or quick f brown. The example match bool prefix query above could match a field containing quick brown fox, but it, it could also match brown fox quick. So 
the order is the difference between match phrase prefix and match bool prefix. It could also match a field containing the term quick, the term brown and a term starting with F appearing in any position. So since it's a bool when you write it again, either match quick or brown or any prefix starting with F. So it's a bool. So either one of these is fine. But for the phrase, the entire phrase must be considered. So here it has to start with quick brown and end with the starting letter F. So these were some full text queries where you can use this to build much more better and complex queries for Elasticsearch uh, documents and index indes indices. In the previous videos, we talked about how Elasticsearch works, how we can use that to write queries and also search on using those queries. We also talked about how to index data to Elasticsearch using REST APIs. And we also talked about some nuances on how to search effectively using Elasticsearch. In this video, we'll start a completely new topic where we can use Elasticsearch with a programming knowledge. And my favorite choice of programming knowledge, to, programming language to use with Elasticsearch is Python. So let's start. The official client for using Elasticsearch with Python is something called as Elasticsearch Py. The name of the framework is Elasticsearch only in Python. So let's see what it is. So Elasticsearch Py is an official low-level client for Elasticsearch. The goal is to provide common ground for all Elasticsearch related code in Python. Because of this, it tries to be opinion free and very extendable. So Elasticsearch Py is a low level client for Elasticsearch, which means that Elasticsearch DSL is another high level client which you can use to search properly using Elasticsearch and Python. But we'll talk about Elasticsearch Py or the low level client for now. So since it is a low level client, it tries to be opinion free or doesn't have to be opinionated and can be used very effectively. And you have a lot of control over the Elasticsearch part of the code as well. So how do we start? We start with installing Elasticsearch. So let's go ahead and do that. I think I already have it. So it should show that satisfied. Yeah. So you can just go ahead and start installing Elasticsearch using pip install. Make sure you have Python three or greater. After that, we need to set up our Elasticsearch server so that our server is exposed on the REST API. So let's go to Elasticsearch folder, go to bin and run the server. This might take a few seconds to run. Let's just wait for that. Until then, this is the official uh, code or the open source code for Elasticsearch Pi. It is open source, so you can go and look at it. All the links that I show you will be there in the description below. And you can see the documentation, see, understand how it works, uh, see which version it supports. Uh, for example, you might have Elasticsearch 5.0, so you can use the 5.x uh, framework specifically uh, by using two and five, as you can see, and we'll be using this example or the example from the documentation uh, and to, and run it to see if it works properly for this video and in the next upcoming videos we'll actually go in deeper with the python client so let's wait and yeah i think we are done with the server and i've also set up a jupyter notebook on which i'll be running the code so let's get started first uh, since we are going to follow documentation, we need date time for now. So uh, we're using date time because we want to see how uh, Python can be integrated with, with Elasticsearch by using Pythonic functions uh, inside Elasticsearch queries and see if they run or not. So we'll use date time, but you can go ahead with any other example, uh, any other library in Python as well. Next, we need Elasticsearch and we need the Elasticsearch class with the E capital. Let's run that and we will run it properly. And now let's create an instance or an object of Elasticsearch, uh, which will have our server running. So let's see where our server is running before we do that. 
usually it's written here so it's published at 9200 port 9200 so yeah as you can see our server is up and running so let's set up an instance with the name elastic yes and yes the instant instance is ready now let's index something uh, just some random raw data into elastic search uh, dummy data so let's call it so we'll be ind indexing using query right so let's make a query now and i'm currently following the official documentation so you can always refer back to the code to make sure that i'm not making any mistakes along the way and you can also play around with the example so that you get a better understanding of the python client so let's say we have some random data uh, and the timestamp for this data will be gathered by date time dot now and yeah that sounds that looks about right now we have a query now let's index this using the index function so es dot index let's create an index so let's say my index as i'm following the documentation the doc type will be a test type it can be anything you like so don't worry about that let's give it an obscure id uh, let's see what the documentation uses if it uses 42 let's give it a 42 as the id uh, we'll be retrieving the uh, data that we have just indexed uh, in the next piece of code so we just want uh, to retrieve by the id and next we have our query which is going to be query in the body and let's see what the errors are uh, authorization index is blocked it's read only okay my bad i think this index is already created so let's say my another index no problem and yeah it's good to go we have successfully created uh, another index and it has a test type it has a document uh, with an ID 42 now let's retrieve that ID so we use the get API to retrieve an ID or retrieve a data from Elasticsearch so we'll go ahead with that use the get function the index is going to be my another index I had to give it a really bad name because I already uh, made the my index before so I'm sorry about that we have the doc type which is the test type and id equal to 42 now this will uh, give us back a dictionary or a dict uh, which is similar to a json and we just want uh, the source of the json which contains this data any data and a timestamp we don't want the entire list but we can get that as well so let's just first uh, see what the uh, entire output looks like so let's call it output sorry yeah and uh, let's see what output looks like so we have the index the type id version uh, found it was able to find uh, a data which had an id 42 and the source contains our final information which we need so let's output that so we have to print the output or we don't need to print it's Jupyter notebook so output let's retrieve the source and wrap that around a string and yeah so as you can see we were able to retrieve the data which we indexed on Elasticsearch uh, using the Python Elasticsearch client this is a very simple basic example of how to use the python client for elasticsearch and as we can see it has a lot of other features as well so it translates basic python data type to and from json uh, the date times are not decoded because uh, elasticsearch uh, itself has its own way of dealing with date and time kind of uh, data uh, structures so uh, for that reason they're not decoded properly it automatically configures discovery of cluster nodes so we'll talk about this later in the upcoming videos it has persistent connections so we were able to uh, set up the server 
and run our code very easily. It has load balancing across all nodes. So when you are scaling up your data set and how you have a lot of data, load balancing helps there. Uh, failed connection penalization. We'll talk about this in the next video. It has thread safety. You don't have to be worrying about a deadlock or any other OS or underlying issues and pluggable architecture. So we were able to set up Elasticsearch uh, for a third party programming language very easily. And all these features make Elasticsearch very easy to use with the Python programming language. In the previous video, we talked about how we can use Elasticsearch with the Python client using the official Elasticsearch package in Python. We also talked about a high level client called as Elasticsearch DSL, which we'll be looking into today and also being having a brief introduction about what it actually means. So what is Elasticsearch DSL? It is a high level library whose aim is to develop uh, writing and running queries against Elasticsearch. So pretty straightforward. It is used to write and run queries against Elasticsearch and it is built on top of the low level client. So it provides a more convenient and an idiomatic way of writing and manipulating queries. So it stays close to the Elasticsearch JSON DSL. You know, it mirrors the terminology, the structure of how you actually write an Elasticsearch query and ex exposes the whole range of DSL from Python either using classes or query set like expressions. It also provides additional optional wrappers to working with documents as Python objects. So you can define mappings, retrieve and save documents, wrap the document data into user defined classes. So you can write up your own class and mimic that class as an actual data source of your data on Elasticsearch. So today we'll just have a simple example of how to use Elasticsearch DSL, uh, just follow the documentation and the upcoming videos will be using both Elasticsearch and Elasticsearch DSL together to see how we can write more complex queries and use Python as a means to do so. So before we start with the code, this is uh, the official GitHub source for Elasticsearch DSL PI. Uh, you can see how to install it. We'll go and do it right now. So install Elasticsearch Py. And just give me a minute. Elasticsearch DSL, I'm sorry. And it's already done. Now let's go ahead and actually focus on the documentation example, which we have here. We'll code this up. And we have already indexed uh, a piece of data, which was any data and the timestamp using the date time uh, Python framework. So we'll be using uh, the same index and the same data to retrieve it or to search for it and see if we can get the results back. So let's get started. As usual, first we need to spin up our Elasticsearch server. So let's do that. Make sure you have the most recent version of Elasticsearch. If not, you'll have to make sure that uh, the Elasticsearch DSL Python package or the PyPy package which you install is also uh, the one which supports your Elasticsearch version. So until this is getting ready, let's see the compatibility issues. So yeah, as you can see, uh, make sure that you have the latest version if possible. Uh, if not, uh, use any of the major versions. Uh, this is how the requirements in your setup or TXC should look like. Okay, I think we're good to go. Let's check if our server is up and running. And it looks like it is. So let's go ahead and see how we can use the Python client for Elasticsearch DSL. Uh, let's actually see if we can use both together or not. So from Elasticsearch, import Elasticsearch, like we did in the previous video. That's nice. And from Elasticsearch DSL, we import search because we want to search the data which we have indexed in the previous video. So es equal to Elasticsearch, we'll spin up an instance and 
okay this is working let's just make sure this is working again let's have a search using es the index we want is my index if you remember let's query this so as you can see it is a very high level client so we can use simple functions like search query etc etc and you'll see how easy it is to actually code up a search query using Elasticsearch in Python right now if you want to match uh, any because any was our uh, key and the value was data so let's see if we can find something which matches the same thing and let's store the response uh, into a variable so let's start execute so we execute the search query and we store the response here awesome now let's see what the response looks like so although we know that there's only one uh, set of one piece of data on the server or on the index but let's just see how it would B if you would have multiple so in for hit and response I'm just following the documentation so I'll be using the same structure let's print uh, the score uh, of the search query how good was it let's make it a bit fancier then let's see uh, the any part so key for any or uh, let's just say source file source yeah so the source was hit dot any if you we were able to find it and hit dot timestamp if I'm right so this should give us the score of how uh, relevant the document was and the source which was hit.any and timestamp which you both need and yeah as you can see the score was 0 0.28 the source was data uh, because we had any data and this is the timestamp which we used using date time.now and this is how we use uh, Elasticsearch DSL with Elasticsearch to search for queries very easily so as you see uh, the main set, a piece of code here which is used to search on the index we have a simple search for functionality using the Elasticsearch client uh, this is how we connect to the Elasticsearch low-level client and also the server the index we use is my index which we had done in the previous video and then we have a function called query where we use the match query and we do it on the key being any and what we're looking for is data we execute this query and store that in a response then for each uh, hit we get for the response we print out the score and the source since our uh, piece of data had only two columns uh, two keys which is any and timestamp we print both of them here and we can also see how the hit looks like so if you want to see the entire thing we can just print the entire thing so it is an object uh, a hit object with score and this is our source and this is the id which is 42 so this is how we use elasticsearch dsl with elasticsearch to search for data inside an elasticsearch index